Hello everybody, it's your friend Rick. It is August the 24th, 2017. If you need to reach me, my email is rick0327 at me.com. And uh, you know, we'll get back to work. I'm sorry for the nonsense. I truly am. You know, but sometimes you got to take a stand. Like, you know, I'm taking a stand against child support. Same mentality, uh, that fighting mentality I had going against uh, you know, the family court here in Queens for years. And it's the same mentality I have when somebody's uh, saying, you know, hurtful, wrongful things about me. So, you know, Mr. Robert Lee over there, a.k.a. Wasil Bay, um, you know, posting, uh, you know, to show how wicked he is, he just posted a video just with the title, proof that, you know, I'm a government agent, a federal agent, whatever the hell it was, $1,500, and he didn't put any proof in it at all, because one cause it doesn't exist, but he just did it, so it's out there. So it just shows you the mentality of this guy, he's, you know, he's, he's, a, he's got a very deceptive mind, all right, and, you know, some skeletons in his closet for Mr. Robert Lee for finding out. So, Mr. Robert Lee, you might want to rethink, uh, you know, attacking me and maybe attacking other people. All right? I'm done with you. Unless you keep coming at me. And then uh, you might have to uh, expose a couple of skeletons in your closet. I've already exposed uh, your paperwork. And I want to thank everybody. Uh, um, when I went to that page, I saw a few of you in the comment section. You know, one guy was like, "Well, I didn't see. Uh, where, where's the proof that you? You know, it wasn't. It was just him po posting it. So it's out out in the YouTube world. So, so if anybody's like, you know, which is you know, which just shows you how wicked this guy is, is that uh, what I explained. You know, I got a couple of these people that you know, just turn the other cheek stuff. I see. I'm not a turn the other cheek guy. Okay, and here's the way I think about it. What if somebody is, uh, you know, just being attacked right now with the child support stuff? First thing they do is they go on YouTube and they're looking into trying to find out what's going on. They come across my page. You know, maybe they, they watch a, a video or two of mine and they're, you know, oh, wow, well, you know make some sense and then they go searching around and then they come across this clown's video now what if that video deters them from coming to to get help from me because they're not going to get help from him we know that but you know what if that influences somebody's the thinking process that could you know at the very least you know and i'm not even talking about like you know making a donation for my paperwork you know it's from for a lot of the information i post on the channel you know, stuff like that. And, you know, I saw a lot of dislikes, and it's nice. I, I thank I thank all of you for coming to, to my defense. You know, uh, a few of you reached out to me through emails and stuff, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, let's forget about that clown. Let's get to work here. Now, all right, I, um, uh, this is a notice of demand. Demand for dismissal. Now, when do you file this? Did you file this? As soon as you they got a court date, or if you have an upcoming court date, you could file this at any time. Now, what I did with this was, if you read it here, it's um, oh, what's going on here? Why is my cursor not showing? All right, oh, it'll show up on your side. Okay, I'm stupid. Um, demand for dismissal, lack of jurisdiction. Why? Failure to introduce evidence of an injury in fact. 28 U.S.C. says that uh, the courts must follow the procedures as set forth by the United States, uh, excuse me, the uh, Supreme Court of the United States. And in Lujan versus Defenders of Wildlife at all, yada, 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 says that there's basically a three-pronged uh, constitutional minimum standard. And that is, one, there has to be a concrete 
concrete evidence showing an injury in fact. Two, it has to be a causal connection between your conduct, the conduct being the accused. Uh, and number three, the likelihood that the court will successfully uh, be able to redress and remedy. Okay? What happens in most of these cases is a uh, woman just goes to court or a man and just says, I want my child support. And like, okay. And it's just, it just becomes like a, a process without her or him saying, uh, why? You see, here's the thing. Child support, really? I mean, you, you, you're supposed to support your offspring 100%. But let's say you're married to uh, a millionaire. I'll, I'll give you a, a good example, uh, 50 Cent. I learned some stuff from him years ago. This is it was funny that uh, he was on the Howard Stern show talking about it. And it was right it was about six months before my whole ordeal started. And what happened was he was explaining. Now, if you were to go by this 25%, for, let's say it's two children, uh, it's 17% for one, 25% for two, and 33% for three and on uh, three or more of your salary. Okay? So now if you're 50 cent and you made $50 million in 2009, he's got to give 25% for his two children? No. And he went on to explain, and he was right, obviously, he knew his shit that uh, in every state there's a combined parental income, maximum amount. And what it is is both parents are supposed to support the children. So let's just say, like in New York, it's, you know, because we know that child support, uh, it's a money game. That's all it is. So the the states are always interested, so some, some uh, legislators every year, they're introducing legislation. Well, next year, let's raise it up to 140000 It was, uh, New York, it was 80, when I got divorced in, in 2005, the combined parental income was eighty thousand dollars and I was forced to pay child support on eighty thousand dollars now actually and that's because I agreed to it now the way it was really supposed to work was my ex-wife was uh, on the books because she used to own a bar and she was on the books for ten thousand dollars so I was only supposed to pay twenty five percent of seventy thousand so you, you understand where I'm going now let's, let's, let's backtrack for you to understand this. Let's say you make $50,000 a year, right? Let's just, we'll just say an easy number for us to, to you know, to use mathematics. Uh, let's say the combined parental income in your state is $100,000. You make $50,000 and you, you know, the, the mother makes $50,000. Well, she's supposed to pay child support. Now, if the kids are staying with her, well, obviously she doesn't have to pay. But the thing is, you're only responsible for the $50,000. So, but let's say, but let's say this, let's say you make $90,000 and she's, she makes $50,000. Do you got to pay 25% of the 90,000? No. You take her 50%, her 50,000, excuse me, and then you deduct it from the hundred, and you're responsible for the. That's the way it works. Because remember, I told you before, uh, the New York was eighty thousand dollars when I got divorced, and uh, she was making ten thousand dollars. I was making, I you know, I made eighty thousand dollars. Well, actually, I made more, but uh, no, I uh, I was out hurt that year. So, but I agreed, I agreed to pay eighty thousand, and in the, the the verbiage of my agreement, that's the way they worded it. So. But if we were to go by the state uh, calculations, I would have only had to pay 70000 You see where I'm going? But because the states get 66%, they don't, they'll, if you don't know this stuff, they'll, they'll just say, oh, you made $90,000 last year. You got to pay 25% of 90000 
But it's not true because the, the, the mother of the children, if she works, her income is supposed to come off. Yours. You know. <laughs> so this is the reason why the states are always increasing the combined parental income because the more child support, the more money the state gets. Okay? So I just went on that tirade for a little bit. All right, so let's go back. So now uh, we're challenging jurisdiction now, okay? I don't know why I never just put it in there, uh, but I'm writing it that way from now on. Challenge jurisdiction of the court to prosecute, okay? You're being prosecuted. Now, in order for the court to prosecute you, they need evidence of jurisdiction, and we're challenging it. Okay, is uh, all you have to do is Google uh, the phrase in quotation marks. You go to Google, right? Uh, well, I'm gonna need this for a second because I gotta show you guys something. But you Google uh, I'll just hold on, bear with me. Okay. All right, quotation. Challenging jurisdiction in court, right? Always challenge jurisdiction, right? We, I'm, I know all you guys, we all been to all these websites. They're great, right? We, we all learn this stuff. Always challenge jurisdiction. And hopefully... You know, by going in here, you'll come across a case law. This guy's good. I know this guy. He's a good guy. Uh, I don't know him personally, but I know his work. Um, and by going in one of these uh, websites, you'll find uh, a case law that says, and there's a whole bunch of them, that says you're, allowed, you're entitled to challenge jurisdiction at any time. There's no time limits. So let's say like right now, for 10 years, you've been getting screwed. And you just found out that your order is void. Now the courts will play all kinds of games. Like, well, why did you wait ten years? Oh, sorry, I didn't. You know, why? Why did the court get away with it for ten years? The court's supposed to know the laws, not me. They're the professionals. All right, they we you know this all gets lost sometimes, and and you gotta re we have to remind ourselves that hey, you guys are the professionals. I'm just a layman or a laywoman. I'm not supposed to know. You're supposed to make me understand. Because when they say, do you understand? Most people just go, yeah. You, you should say, no, I don't understand. Please make me understand by using everyday language. Now, <laughs> let's just say that on paper. I doubt you're going to get away with that in a courtroom because they're going to use every type of tactic that these uh, that these uh, devils use, these 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 uh, black-robed devils, all right? That's what they, uh, they use, all of those, those ploys, those tactics. Like the number one tactic is the, the gavel, okay? You're talking, and then they interrupt your, you know, your, your, your thoughts. Plenty of times, <laughs> you know, when I go over my tangents in these videos, I go on for too long, and I, get, I, I distract myself, and I forget what I was saying. Well, think about, like, you're in a courtroom, you're nervous, you're before a, a, a judge that's being mean to you, you're talking about something maybe you're not that, you know, familiar with, it's very easy for a judge to bang that, you know, that gavel down and, and you'll lose your trend of thought, okay? So we try and keep it simple, and I find it's easier to use paper. I like to file paper because it's a record, okay? You know, of course... You know, if you watch some of my, my older videos, you'll watch I go at these people in court. I, I walk the walk, okay? If some of you watch my videos where I'm in court fighting against this uh, shitbird uh, support magistrate here in New York, you know, I went right at her. I mean, I hate that woman. But, you know, again, it's easy for the court to distract you because they want to distract you. They don't want you to know that they're supposed to tell you they claim, well, I can't give you legal advice. You're not giving me legal advice. You're explaining. Giving legal advice and explaining are two entirely different things. You giving legal advice is saying, well, this is what you should do. 
or if I was you, I wouldn't do that. No, I'm asking you to explain. You're, before you became a judge, you were a lawyer. And when they become a judge, they got to go to judge school. Who the hell knows what they teach them there? They probably just, what they do, they probably teach them math. Because <laughs> it's all about money. All right? But, all right, so let's get back to this. All right, so what I do now, what I add uh, is uh, clarify jurisdiction for me to understand. Is that where I put it? Let me see here. All right, the demand for dismissal, the claimant petitioner has failed to introduce evidence of an injury or fact. Where does jurisdiction come from? Evidence, right? The undersigned respondent understands that the basic principles of American jurisprudence entitles him or her. Now, if you get the paperwork, guys, delete her. If, if ladies, you get it from me, delete him, okay? To challenge the jurisdiction of the court, to prosecute, right? Put a comma there, and this court cannot proceed any further until evidence of jurisdiction is clarified to the understanding of the undersigned challenger. That's you. You're challenging. Further, jurisdiction cannot be proven by citation of some law. Okay? How many times are we in court and you're saying, what's the jurisdiction, Your Honor? And he or she, like, and they'll cite some law. Like in New York, they're famous. They go, Family Court Act 413. All right, lovely. But where's the evidence? Oh, blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? We're all finding out. This is one of the hardest things to do. But by introducing this right away, right, we're getting it on the record. So the next time you go to court, uh, Your Honor, I believe you have, uh, an, you know, you want, want to call it a motion, call it a motion. I don't like calling it a motion, but that's the common verbiage there. Just say, you have a motion before you. Uh, I need a ruling. Now, again, the way I do these things, I'm like, I'm tired of these uh, dismissed without merit. They, you know, that, that, that rubber stamp bullshit that they do all the time. Now, I need clarification to my understanding, okay? Now, uh, what I, uh, also what I discovered is, um, there's a Supreme Court decision. Oh, it's not here. That's right. Um, in the um, in the uh, demand for trial by jury, here's the, Congress is not permitted to pass a law to deprive you of a constitutional right. Right. So that the, so just remember that. That's all you got to say. Congress or the legislature. Or, you know, say Congress or state legis or state just say state lawmakers. Congress or state lawmakers are forbidden from passing laws that deprive me of my right to a jury trial. Because uh, in Pennsylvania, a judge with uh, with D, uh, he uh, was like, "Well, the uh, the statutes, uh, common the the fam uh, what is it, uh, child support statutes." Uh, say you don't you, you don't you, you don't get a trial by jury. Bullshit. Okay, it's all you if you allow it to happen, shame on you. You gotta keep say saying it. That's your constitutional right. And again, there's a um, a, 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 a very <laughs> fairly often cited. Uh, landmark you know, United States Supreme Court decision on due process. It's Murray versus Hoboken Land. All right, so let's go check that out. All right. All right, verse, sometimes it just comes right up. All right, what the hell is it? All right, Hoboken, let's see, come on, there we go. Alright. Which which basically what it says is that uh, 
Due process is synonymous with the law of the land. You can't have one without the other, see? So what's the law of the land? Well, the law of the land and due process is a judgment from a a judgment from peers from a trial by jury. Okay? If you go and we don't have time right now. Uh, also, the court examined traditions of common law to find whether non-judicial warrants, oh, there we go, non-judicial warrants had a presi uh, presidential basis. It found that they did and did not find a constitutional pro provision prohibiting their use. Therefore, the court con concluded the act conformed with federal government's power to collect and disperse revenue, which is, be, well, basically includes all of the, well, they don't have a law for it, but you got to challenge it, okay? But we also have um, Burnham versus Superior Court that says any uh, non-judicial person judgment is void for lack of jurisdiction, so that gets rid of this, okay? Now, I want to show you what I found. Um, that's the reason why I got the, the liberty definition, okay? Liberty definition. All right? Liberty. Okay. The state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. Okay. Child support is issuing void judgments against you. And these void judgments, they're freezing your, they're, they're being sent to a, a third party debt collection agency Hold on a second. It's fucking, this guy's got a lawn that's so small. He, he mows the lawn every day. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Anyway. So there's a way to, there's a way for us to go at it. All right, here it is. And this is a Supreme Court case. Uh in the Supreme Court of Ohio, all right? It says right here, in Ohio, the appellant seeks a writ of habeas corpus, which is an extraordinary remedy available where there is an unlawful restraint of a person's liberty and no adequate remedy at law. Habeas corpus will lie when a judgment is void due to lack of jurisdiction. However, it is not a proper remedy when a court has jurisdiction. So what we can do is we could file a writ of habeas corpus. And I had this in my head uh, in family court a couple of years ago, and I was fighting with the idiot clerks. They're like, you got to be in jail to file a writ of habeas corpus. I'm like, no, my, you you. you you're, you've imprisoned my liberty. Okay? So I was right. All right? So I've always had it in my head to do this, and I found this today right before I started the video. So I'm going to start looking into doing this. All right? Filing a writ of habeas corpus to uh, have the court look at a void judgment. So rather than going through um, um, a writ of mandamus, or even filing an, a, an appeal in an appellate court, because the writ of habeas corpus has, is, has to be addressed first on the docket. Okay? And the, the whole purpose is to try and get into the court, because in my experiences, they'll do everything that they can to prevent you from standing in front of the judge where it's being recorded and there's people in there where... They got to answer questions pertaining to this type of stuff. My video, the, you know, the guy, <laughs> you know, he, I had to force him to issue that stay. And that was a, the 22nd was a year. Okay. If you watch the video, I, I had to 
really had to maneuver my way with this guy because he was definitely not trying to help me, but he was being a gentleman because he, he was afraid of me because they knew about me. He, because he's a bright guy, he's not a dumb man. He knows what he's doing is illegal. And he also knew that I, I, uh, I brought a lawsuit against his predecessor, the judge that retired. And uh, he knows that they, they railroaded me. So, but, but he's also smart enough to realize that, you know, all it takes is one time. All right? If you, all of these United States Supreme Court decisions, remember, those are people or, or uh, corporations that refuse to take no for an answer. Okay? Supreme Court decisions are people who refuse to take no for an answer. And that's what we are. We refuse to take no for an answer. Okay? So, all right, I'm going to shut this video down. Uh, and remember, notice a demand for lack, uh, notice a demand for dismissal, lack of jurisdiction. Okay? You want to file this right away. Right? And why are we doing it? Because the court lacks jurisdiction, and we're challenging jurisdiction. We're telling you you lack jurisdiction, and when you try and finagle, uh, try and pull the wool over our eye, no. Well, explain it to me. Explain it to us. All right, so listen. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.